So in this video, I'm going to start right at the basics with uh, setting up Integromat and connecting it to NAC. So if you Google Integromat, um, you'll end up on their home page. So simply click on sign up, fill in the credentials, read through the terms of service and check the box if you'd like to receive uh, news updates. Um, you can obviously sign in with other um, social media or Gmail accounts. I'm just signing up manually. So I just click sign up for free. So you then receive this message to say it's been created and just jump into your email to verify. So switching over to my email, I've received this email here. Simply click verify my email address. So that now redirects me back to Integromat where I can sign in. Put in my credentials and click sign in. So I filled in these fields, just selecting the appropriate company or business, uh, primary role, size of company, uh, check whether you've uh, used any other integration platforms before and then fill that in if required. And then your coding skills. So I'm gonna put mine down at zero. It's possibly half or a one, but I'm gonna stick with that and click continue. Okay, cool. So we are now in and uh, welcome message here thrilled that you've arrived so we can read through that I'm just going to close this down because I obviously already use Integromat and this has brought us on on the left hand side there's a menu here and we're currently on the resource hub so the main pages that I would uh, use would be my dashboard so if I go to here uh, on on this screen you can see that we're on the free subscription and it shows you on uh, operations how many operations you can have and currently we've used zero out of 1000. I just close this uh, little thing down here. And also it shows you the data transfer, which is currently zero uh, percent. And we have a maximum of 100 megabytes of data that we can use on this free plan. So along the top, there are uh, different options here for your users. So you can have multiple users, subscription plans. We're currently on the free. So you need to tailor whichever plan suits best for you as you move forward. And there's a payments section, which you can set up your payments, uh, where your, sorry, where your payments go. And then there's other things for email notifications and options. So this, this payment section will be your invoices that you've got over time. So back onto the left-hand side, um, the next one down is scenarios. This is where we will be building our scenarios out and creating the actual connections. So the first thing to do is to click on the button at the top that says create a new scenario and then click on this add. You then get a list of all apps and I'm just looking for NAC. So I can select that. And this menu shows you the different types of triggers and actions and things that you can do with NAC. So most of the time you're going to be using some sort of trigger. So an event will happen in NAC, like a record is added or a record is edited. And then there's actions beneath where you can do things such as create, delete, upload, uh, and make uh, API calls, etc. So these are all the actions. And then there's a search at the bottom. So to get us going, what I'm going to do first of all is just search for some records in my NAC application. So I'm going to click on that. And that gives me a module. And the first thing it's asking me to do, which is this red uh, bubble here, um, is to create a connection. So I don't have any connections in my list already. So I'm just going to add a connection and I'm going to call it, uh, yeah, my NAT connection. I'm just going to capitalize that. Uh, it's fine. And what it's after is my application ID and my API key. So I need to switch back into NAC. So I'm now back in NAC and I have a very simple application to uh, play around with here. I'm in my schema. So if I go up to the options and down to API and code, and it brings me straight to the API section and it's this ID that I need to copy. So select that and control C to copy back over to Integromat, paste that, uh, copy the API key and paste that back in. Uh, simply click continue and that will create the connection between Integromat and my NAC app. So now if I click on the object drop down, I should see my objects in here. So I've got customer, vehicle, vehicle checklist, make model, and then these are roles, developer, manager, user, and the accounts object. So if I just flick back and go to my records, you can see here that I have an object for customer, vehicle, 
vehicle checklists, make model, accounts, and then developer, manager, and user. So what I want to do in this case is just um, bring back a record. So I'm going to just select customer and uh, you have the option here to do filters. We're not going to worry about that at the second. And I'm just going to leave this as set at a limit of 100. And I'm just going to say OK. So this is just going to look for all records in the object called customer. So I'm going to go back to NAC and look at my customers table. Now this only has one customer in it and it's uh, all fake records. But it's uh, a guy called Tony Smith. I tend to just use this um, right click uh, context menu. So if you right click on the module, you can just run this module only. Now at this moment in time, we obviously only have one module. So you could use the big blue button down the bottom here that says run once. So I'm just going to click that and that will run once. And what it does, it looks at the table and pulls back the records and it shows here that uh, there's one bundle that's been received. So if I click on that, it shows you um, that it was an output, so information that was received. And if you go through this section, you can see here there's the name and the name of Tony Smith. Now, in case you're not aware, um, NAC has a record ID which isn't visible with inside the application. So looking through the data that's come back here, it's pulled back uh, an auto increment field, and my auto increment was one. It also shows it as a raw value. So if there was um, fields with HTML, it strips everything out and just gives you as, as raw text. So in this view, we've got the auto increment, the date time field, uh, who added it. And there's a little plus next to this, which I'll come back to in a second. Uh, it's got uh, the name, the address, and the amount of bundles, which was one. So just flicking back into... Um, into NAC, you can see this is my auto increment for this record was one date and time who added it and it was added uh, by a way of a connection so the person that added it if I show you this as the fields view this is a connection to my accounts object and then the person's name and the address but at no point does NAC show me the uh, record ID so this record ID here is unique it's um, I think it's 27 characters um, off the top of my head, and that is the key that actually identifies that unit that record uniquely. And it's important to remember that when you're using Integramat, it's the record IDs that we're using, not auto increments. It's not the label or the name. It's the actual record ID. Now I mentioned a moment ago that who added that record was a connection, and if I open up this added. Oh, sorry, added by, if I just collapse that down. Um, added by, open that up. You can see here it was added by Carl Holmes, which is me. And if I flick back, you can see that it was added by me. And if I change back to the fields view, you can see if I click on this, that this is um, the relationship is each customer connects to one account. And obviously the accounts section is over here and there is only one a, one a person in the accounts, which is me. So once again, in the accounts object, it only has my name, my email, my password, user status, and my user role. But if in Integramat, it's actually showing me the record ID of that line item in the accounts object. So that would be uh, the record, if we're using it to do anything, that's what we're connecting is the IDs. So everything is about using the ID numbers. So this is the customer's name, which is just text, and it also breaks it down for you underneath into the raw components, so title, first, middle, and last. So you can use these as well in Integromat if you need to extract just the first name or the last name. The address comes through here as a one piece of text string, and then once again underneath it breaks it down uh, into the various components. So you can, you can pick these up even including things like latitude and longitude. So if I go back up a bit further, the only one I haven't expanded is added. So in NAC, um, as part of my standard build, if I go back to the customers table, um, I have a field called added, um, which is just set to uh, UK format, day, day, month, month, year, year. And when a record is added, I have a record rule which sets the date and time that the record was added. So if I show you, so it's like a timestamp. So this one was added um on the 12th of september 
at 10 minutes past 12. So back in Integromat, you can see here that it's coming up is a US format, but it still works the same. So that's uh, September the 12th, and then it shows it here as the 12th of September, uh, hours, minutes, AM, PM. It also gives you a Unix timestamp, um, an ISO timestamp, and a, a normal timestamp, and then it splits the time out as well. So it gives you an incredible amount of flexibility to be able to do other things with the information that gets received. So if I just um, finish this off, at the top left-hand side, uh, this scenario is just given the label of Integromat or Integration NAC. So I'm just going to call it um, Search for Records. And you can just hit the return key and it saves it. Down the bottom, there's some icons, so you need to just click on Save here. It does auto-save, but I tend to click Save. You just get a little pop-up here to say your scenario has been saved. If I now go back using the exit arrow, um, I can see the diagram. I can then get in to see the history. So this shows you uh, that a scenario was created and that it ran and it was successful. And you can click on the Details icon here, and it will show you, uh, once again, this uh, output uh, if I go back to my scenarios it now lists it in the scenarios here as search for records so I can click back on that once again uh, we just did history and there's also a section for any incomplete executions which there aren't any because it ran fine so going back to the list of scenarios this is the one scenario we have it's currently switched off um, if I wanted to have this on a on a timed event, I could switch it on and it could do something every day or every hour, um, and we can set those parameters at a later date. The last thing I wanted to show you here uh, is to just to set up folders. As you start to create your scenarios, this list can get quite long. So a useful tip is just to add a folder. So if you wanted to create a folder, and we'll just call this one uh, work, and add that folder. And then you can write, you can click on the drop down arrow here on this scenario and move it to a folder. So we're just going to move it to work. And that now sits in this work folder. So you, as you get dozens or hundreds of scenarios, you can segregate them into neater folders. I'm just going to go back to the dashboard and uh, we can see here uh, on our operations that uh, it's actually still showing 0%. We have done an operation, but you can see the, the usage here that uh, if I come up here, data transfer, we had one operation and it was 778 bits. So it wasn't even a, a, a kilobyte. So a tiny amount, but that's just one packet. And this could obviously show you your usage on your free account. Now a thousand um, API calls does sound like a huge amount, but as we start getting into this, you'll see that as you're looking at records, um, this can be, can be got through quite quickly, depending on how complex your scenario is. OK, that's a quick overview of how to connect up, use and connect to NAC. So I hope you found that useful.